I 27 male, confronted my GF 30 female, after she accused me of cheating on her. She sent me proof but it looks fake. Because it will be useful later on, a brief overview of the past is in order. My father was a verbally and physically violent person. He used to punch me in the stomach with a belt and refer to me as. He used to believe that I was the outcome of my mother's adultery with another man. My mother never met or spoke to me before. According to other family members, she passed away when I was still a baby. It was my father who told me that she had committed suicide. My father passed away when I was 17 years old. I told my girlfriend about it since I trusted her at the time. She was kind and supportive. And she did aid me in comprehending what I was saying. We'd been together for two years at that point. She is the owner of the property. She covered the majority of the expenditures, with the exception of some utilities and food, which I covered. We have financial security as well as self-sufficiency in our lives. She earns far more than I do. However, it was never a problem. We were head over heels in love with each other. The number of people in our group is rather huge. Then there are extra buddy circles inside each one of these groups. In the same way as the Vaughn diagram. Everyone was able to recognize one another's faces. So, on the first day, my GF was late to the apartment. I believe she was with her female pals when she didn't respond. She didn't even bother to glance at me before walking right into the bathroom. When she returned, she immediately started cursing me. She had never cursed someone in her life. After that, she started calling me a liar and? Her next move was to hurl my plants on the ground. I came to a total standstill. Somewhere deep within me, it triggered a thought. She then told me that I needed to go outside. So I went into the kitchen and collected some essentials before walking out the door without saying anything. I then called a few of my friends. We'll refer to them as Mand MS for short. They are a gay couple that live together. We'd known one other for a long time before this. They allowed me to stay at their home and furnished me with a mattress. I was prohibited from consuming alcoholic beverages. They suggested that I take a break since I was in such disarray. They also advised me that she may have cheated and that this whole situation is a deception to conceal her guilt and hide her tracks. They then invited me to join them on a trip to their parents' house, which was located in a small hamlet. I accepted. I dialed my boss's phone number and asked for a leave of absence. That was something he consented to. After that, I went on Facebook. She informed me that she had ended her relationship with me and was now dating D. You contacted me and accused me of cheating on her with another man. I had reached the end of my rope at this point, so I deleted my Facebook account. It's evolved into a little amount of movement. Because some of the girls started to tell their own experiences, the group grew in size. Someone on Reddit advised me to at least get evidence from her. So I approached her and inquired. She showed me Tinder convos in which I seemed to be flirting with one of her pals. And she emailed me a snapshot of herself with love bites. After I and man compared them, the convos seemed to be fabricated. I was furious that she had done all of this without even verifying them. So I shared them on Facebook and chastised her. Some individuals sided with me. She felt enraged once again. I threw my belongings in her home and posted them as well. This had now devolved into childishness. My pals agreed since they were behaving like teenagers and chatting with them would not fix the problem. So I simply handed them my phone and instructed them to give it back to me when they returned from their vacation. At that time, I was content. I felt like I was dodging a bullet. What occurred on Facebook? My pals serve as my guardian angels. They report them for cyberbullying or harassment once I give them my phone. They conversed with others. I created a few blogs and videos. At first, people didn't take my side since I didn't say anything. People stood up for themselves, my GF buddy group then began calling me since I was living with them. Because it was homophobic, almost everyone stopped paying attention to them. Update, we departed the following day for their parents' place. It is located in a neighboring little community. It was fun, and it helped me forget about everything. We stayed for two days. Their family is really supportive. I received preferential treatment since they mistook me for their third partner. That's sort of wholesome. We left their home and informed me about some intriguing events that had occurred in town. They advised me to consider things over thoroughly before making any judgments. They returned my phone and informed me that my GF had attempted to contact me. When she dialed their numbers, they answered. She said that there was a major mistake, that she is sorry, and that she now wants to speak with me. At first, I was apprehensive. But it was an excellent chance to find out what had transpired. So I phoned her immediately away because I wanted to put a stop to this. She attempted to resolve the situation there, but I told her I would only speak to her in person, at a cafe, and if she told me everything honestly. 
she concurred. After returning, we meet up at a cafe. Friends waited for me in the vehicle. She attempted to embrace me and burst into tears. I wouldn't allow her. We sat down and began conversing. She told me everything that had transpired from the beginning. So she became friends with this gang of gals around two months ago. We'll name them the inner circle, these are the kind of females that make fun of the protagonists in American adolescent movies and plays. Then there are two females in the bunch. We'll name them L and T, personally, I never pair L with T. L despised me to the core. She believes she is deserving of a genuine guy. Because I'm not ripped and make less money than she does. L continued to manipulate GF for a month, with the assistance of other females. So, a few days before my GF kicked me out of the home, L and T devised a strategy. They made some Tinder convos in which T and I seem to have been matched and I appear to have been flirting with her. She showed them to my girlfriend the day before she kicked me out. This infuriated her. It succeeded, according to GF, since they had been influencing her for a month, so they urged her to have revenge, then toss me out and show me where I belonged. They set up GF with a man, let's call him D. D has a little company in town and resembles one of those male underwear models. D was not informed of the inner circle's agenda. He simply knew I had harmed GF and that he wanted to assist her. Also, D had a crush on my GF and was only interested in a few. My girlfriend, on the other hand, assumed he was looking for a long-term relationship. So they had on that particular day. She came home and threw me out. D moved into her new home the next day. They had a good time once again. I took some pictures to give to you later. Everything was okay until the homophobic rant. On Facebook, the GF updated her relationship status and added his name. This causes him considerable worry. It escalated into a little brawl. And since everything that the inner circle plan was built on falsehoods, and it takes 1000 lies to cover up one lie. That tiny brawl escalated into a massive brawl. T had had enough of drama and admitted what they had done. T didn't want to embarrass me, I just wanted to disconnect from my girlfriend. D was horrified when he realized they were using him. For some reason, he despised cheaters and wanted to teach me a lesson. Which is still a little strange given that he did change genders. He abandoned her. The room became quiet. GF also abandoned the girls. She expressed her remorse and sadness over what she had done. She also removed prior postings on Facebook and said that it was simply a huge understanding. She also instructed others to do the same. She told me that we should get back together and that she would mend or purchase some new clothes for me. She said that she has given me license to sleep with anybody I'd choose and that she would even assist me in up. I gave my response. I no longer want to be with you. You harmed me. Even if you were manipulated, you still damaged me and shared your personal suffering with others. And a single man doesn't need or ex is okay to sleep with someone else. This is our last encounter, and I don't want you to contact me again. You may retain what's left of my belongings. Bye bye I departed after paying for the coffee. I didn't turn around. I believe she began to weep and yell. Everyone was gazing at me. I got into ma'am's vehicle and drove away. That was just a few hours ago. Why did I do this? It's not going to work. I despise her for how she handled the situation and harmed me. I'll be with her at all times. I'm seeing her with a bloody belt in her hands. She behaved childlike despite the fact that she was an independent mature lady. There are a lot of red flags here. Instead of living with someone who has injured you, I will stay alone for the rest of my life. What was I to blame? I didn't speak out for myself. I should have done it on the first day. Even if the devil himself is there in front of you, you have stood up for yourself. But not anymore. I'm going to work on myself right now. I'm still in my early 20s. In the future, I will find someone. So, what will I do? I'm going to speak with the management and request that I will be transferred to another city. A fresh start will be fantastic.